Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the 1966 Ford F100 flare side pickup truck from Mobius. It's a 125 scale kit, number 1232. Now, the model was released uh, by Mobius in 2019 as part of their pickup series, and so far they released two other related models, uh, a 65 F100 custom cab and a 66 F100 work truck. Now, the contents of the kit uh, have about 134 pieces that are molded in gray styrene, uh, chrome, clear, and red plastic with vinyl tires. The molds are really good and uh, they have an excellent uh, instructional set. It's a skill level 3 uh, according to Mobius which is more of a, an immediate, uh, intermediate and adva to advanced builder. When you're done with the kit it'll be about 7 inches long. Just a second folks, uh, I think that's Newt on the line. Let me, uh, hold on. Thanks for joining in there, Newt. Uh, what's on your mind today? Well, for one thing, you're spitting on the mic, so back up a bit. I don't want it to short out. <laughs> you know, okay, uh, how's that? That's better. You must be eating crackers again. I do have a couple questions, though. Well, I gotta keep my energy levels up, but uh, no problem. Uh, hey, what you got? I've never heard of a M Mobius truck. When did they make those? Well, actually it's a Ford truck, but the model maker is Mobius. They were best known for monster and space oriented model kits, but they branched out into automotive kits a few years ago. I see, but why did they call it a flare side? Oh, well that's because the, um, the flat sided trucks are called fleet sides, like those that uh, get sold to big car fleets. Uh, but this model has flared fender wells, and that's why they call it a flare side. So, uh, does that answer your questions, Newt? Yeah. Okay, well that was uh, Newt, uh, folks. He's our program director and he's uh, tele-monitoring uh, uh, because we have stay-in-place orders here in our state. So, here's what the, um, the contents of the kit look like. As you can see, they're a nice uh, medium gray for most of the components. Of course, the uh, tires are separate. Um, but um, we'll be using mostly uh, liquid cement for glue, sometimes uh, a little bit of uh, uh, super glue and, and white glue occasionally for window pieces. There's also a small set of uh, nicely done decals for the kit. Um, we'll be um, making sure to use our manufacturer safety and use guidelines when uh, using any of the uh, products that you see or hear in the review and you should do the same. Construction will start with the uh, frame uh, portions and the uh, uh, some suspension pieces. So get the uh, these parts, the frame cross members, suspension arms, and the mounts, etc. As you see here, and the rear differential uh, gets glued together to form the uh, subassembly for the back end there. Now the parts fit together very nicely, and they have uh, good positive glue points. Uh, and so um, a little liquid cement and assemble this, these uh, sub-assemblies here and they're very solid. Now here's a modeler's tip. The end of the exhaust pipes uh, should be tubes, of course. So I'm going to cut that off there at the end and I'm going to replace it with a hollow tube. Now uh, I use some evergreen um, plastic that matches the diameter of the uh, pipes. But you can also use some brass tubing. Uh, and uh, just cut off uh, the same section and the length of your tubing and replace it with that and uh, you get a more realistic looking exhaust. So um, uh, be careful up front there with the motor mounts. They are not the exact same. They're asymmetrical to fit into different spots on the motor. And here's a close up of the swing axles. So you can see there uh, parts of the suspension for uh, greater clarity. Now it's time to give the uh, two sub-assemblies here, a nice coat of uh, light gray primer. I used a dark gray um, uh, Vallejo type paint here for um, uh, painting and uh, gave uh, the frame and the rear end uh, there a nice uh, couple coats of that. 
Here you can see we'll add the uh, anti-sway bar and the um, uh, steering rack up front. Take a look at the wheels here. You can see the inners, outers, and the shocks, and also that um, uh, spare uh, mount. That's also kind of a cross member for the frame for rigidity. On the uh, inside of the wheel backs, I added some uh, tiny bits of rod stock and drilled a hole there uh, to act as the brake line connectors. And later on, they get trimmed to uh, shape. Now, um, I painted the um, the wheel uh, with a, uh, a clear orange over a uh, titanium gold. Those are Tamiya brands. I wanted a resto mod look for my uh, model, and so uh, then I assembled those uh, wheels and tires. I painted the exhaust uh, pipes there and the muffler with silver paint for a base. The muffler itself was given a um, a spray of a mix of silver uh, with a tinge of gold in it to uh, uh, look more realistic and then uh, that was mounted along with the uh, spare wheel that uh, goes in the back there of the frame. The uh, mounting bracket there and the differential into place. Uh, also remember you have to scrape some glue off or some paint off for the glue to adhere to another part so make sure that uh, painted and chromed parts get that treatment. We can add the uh, shocks into place there on the back end, attached to the frame and then to the axles. Uh, they're the green colored items and um, that's just for a little variety and to break up the uh, dark uh, tones in the lower end. Uh, so just to make it more interesting. Now the brake lines uh, that were made from uh, the little rod stock, actually that stretched sprue, um, they uh, are added using some super glue gel and then uh, a little accelerator to put those in place there. Now I used uh, a little brush paint here to uh, paint the, um, the, the um, sway bars and those details that were just added with a uh, semi-gloss black. Now we'll use these pieces to start uh, assembling the, uh, the pickup truck's bed. Now the, um, the, the bed is actually pretty well, the floor there, detailed, it's pretty well detailed, but um, I decided to use some um, some wood to accentuate it uh, as it would have had wooden slats there and so I got some stir sticks um, uh, to replicate the wood floor and um, and you can see that the veneer strips uh, were glued uh, to the floor there and and then treated with a little bit of um, floor um, uh, pledge you know floor polish uh, like you would over your uh, clear coat uh, just to kind of protect it and keep it from getting dirty Next I um, gave the inside of the pieces here uh, a good coat of primer and uh, uh, a medium gray paint uh, because I didn't want to have any unpainted spots in hard to reach areas after assembly. We can assemble the bed at this time. The parts go together and they fit perfectly. Uh, nice alignment. Just make sure that everything's flat and square. So then um, a little test fit here shows the uh, bed goes right into place in the frame and actually fits very snugly. This is what the bed looks like from the other side. If you turn over the uh, turn it over there the frame is attached pretty nicely to it. Now we'll do a little prep work on the uh, cab. You can see the black markers there that point out the um, uh, parting lines that need to be sanded and removed and then uh, a nice light scuff for the whole thing as we get that staged and ready. And now I um, I use some foam, styrofoam there to mask the inside of the bed which had already been uh, painted. And um, we'll be adding that and then painting the entire uh, truck, you know, with candy colors and some transparents to make sure that uh, they all have a good consistent uh, look. So we'll gather up all these pieces. You can see they've been primed and we're going to set those aside to dry just a little while uh, to get them ready for paint. So in the meantime, we'll start working on the motor. Here's the pieces you need, uh, and it's very nicely detailed uh, inline six, uh, which is kind of rare in uh, the modern kits. A uh, nice rendition of that motor. Uh, but put the uh, engine halves together and the, uh, glue the oil pan on. So the um, the uh, transmission is also nicely detailed, uh, which you don't see that often in 125 scale kits. Okay, we'll add the um, transmission uh, to the um, engine block. It's keyed there with a D plug, so make sure you get that aligned properly. Um, I actually um, 
needed to do some repair on that later. So the engine block gets painted with some uh, medium blue paint and the transmission with some aluminum shades and then uh, we're going to let that set and dry. Then the various parts of the engine get painted and assembled together. Um, here you have the air filter and the riser, the starter motor and the generator together with the manifolds and the engine mounts uh, added in their various colors, nicely looking. On the other side, the oil filter, distributor, and the fuel pump uh, with the fuel filter on that. In all honesty, this is one of the nicest looking engines out of the box that, uh, that I've seen in a long time. She's just uh, beautiful and goes together well. So next we're, we're back to the uh, body paint. And uh, it, of course it was primed, as we mentioned, with um, a Mr. Surfacer 1500, a medium gray. Uh, and then for a base coat, we're going to spray both of these units at the same time uh, with some Tamiya Titanium Gold and a little uh, leveling thinner to make sure it's smooth. Now these two components together then uh, will give you an idea of what the truck will look like. So this is going to be a two-tone uh, and I masked off the uh, upper part of the cab and then we'll uh, get that uh, set to apply the lower uh, color coat. So again to use the um, uh, colors that we painted the wheel with um, here's some Tamiya uh, clear orange over the titanium gold and uh, that's how it looks. We'll remove the masks, and uh, the, the paint went down nicely, but I thought it would be a little more contrast with the upper, but I still think it uh, matches pretty well. The, um, the Tamiya masking tape works pretty well. It lifts right off, leaves a nice clean line in most, uh, most applications. And uh, so now, uh, with the, um, the hood in place, I noticed that it, it wasn't exactly well aligned. Um, and so um, I had to decide whether to um, uh, just leave it like that or um, actually uh, glue it in place and make sure it's uh, solidly attached to the cab. And now the uh, truck's bed was uh, unmasked and uh, the uh, tape removed and it looked uh, pretty nice uh, ready for um, some test fitting here. Now we can add the uh, uh, glue the, the rear fender wells onto the bed and uh, you can see how the uh, two-tone effect is going to look. Now we can uh, go back up front. We'll work on the engine bay area there. Um, these all get painted with a, uh, uh, a matte black or I should say a satin black kind of a medium gloss finish. After these have dried you can uh, install those into place in the front end there. Uh, once again, for realism, the um, engine got a treatment of black wash. I made some uh, from a little bit of uh, artist's paint here. Just thin that down uh, to give it uh, a, uh, applied liberally over the engine to simulate a little grime, etc. Uh, but it was a restored truck, so uh, we didn't want it to, to look too bad. So most of the oil wash gets removed. On the other side, we'll uh, finish up the engine with the decal that goes on the... Um, the air cleaner cover there up up on the top and get that ready for installation. Now it's a good time to pop those wheels into place on the axles and um, also we're going to mount that motor into position. You see some brake lines that are uh, hanging out there, some stretched through brake lines uh, and those are ready for installation later but for now uh, before you install the motor uh, put the drive shaft into place too. That seems to have been missed uh, in the instructions. So make sure that you get that done at the same time as you're installing the motor on its mounts. Okay, well we've set the stage for a nice looking model with the uh, rolling chassis done and the, uh, and the body painted. But now we need to go to the interior, so grab these parts out of the kit. Uh, very nicely detailed pieces. And um, we're going to take and carry the uh, interior with the uh, uh, same kind of color scheme from from outside. So I sprayed the uh, vinyl covered areas with uh, it's called orange leather from MRP and then the metallic surfaces are the same gold that I used for the body. So the, the uh, floor pan was painted uh, with a uh, black lacquer and then uh, I added the uh, bench to it which was painted in the orange color. And the, the door panels here uh, were painted with the metallic gold and 
uh, a silver felt pen used to highlight some of the chrome pieces there. Now, um, to, on the dash, uh, you get a choice. You, you can either use the decal, and uh, although they seem to be a little big for the uh, IP area there, uh, or you can just detail it by hand as I did here. So now you can assemble the uh, interior. Um, as you know, there's not many pieces involved here, uh, including uh, the dash and the steering wheel and column. Um, and I actually I put the um, the uh, the back uh, of the seat there plate in backwards. I had to turn that back around and re-glue it later. With the interior done and set aside to dry, uh, work on the uh, cab, and you can glue the windows into place now. I used uh, some of the um, white crystal clear glue uh, to put those into position. Now the back window and the lateral ones fit nicely, but the windshield is a little bit wide and there's some hairline gaps there in the corners so I filled those with some uh, uh, black uh, tinted white glue a replicating rubber mold <laughs> and also the chrome trim was made out of uh, of course bare metal foil and the chromed grill was added in place now you may have noticed um, the color combo is more striking now with the uh, metallic trim and uh, once again, make sure you scrape off any plating before you glue those pieces into position. So the, the rear window has a nicely molded rim uh, that can be painted black to replicate the uh, gasket. And it fits nicely. And now here's that section that goes into the front end, um, you know, behind the radiator and the front grill uh, supports. So that radiator core support and the radiator will also be installed uh, after you get this into position. Next we can add the uh, window washer bag and there's a decal for that uh, as well as the battery. Here's a look at that uh, engine bay from the other side. You can see the decal in the washer bag and um, the uh, engine uh, is ready to mate in there and along with the chassis. Okay, here's the builder's note. You're going to do something wrong when you build your model but um, you know a good modeler can fix his mistakes. I had cut off these nubs. I thought they were brew tabs uh, but they are mounts for the um, rear bumper uh, so uh, once I realized that uh, that happened I just added a couple of sprue shaped ends to fit onto the bumper and uh, then the, the frame <laughs> would work just perfectly so I sprayed the, uh, the rear bumper with some alclad and then once that was dried I uh, glued that and mounted it into position now here's a view of the assembly uh, from the opposite angle so you can see uh, everything is in place uh, and the uh, model is almost complete except for the external chrome details uh, around the unit. Um, and now I've noticed some uh, issues here with the uh, pieces. The, the badges here get added along with the wipers and the chrome parts are not as good as the rest of the kit seems. Uh, there's some badly placed uh, ejector gates uh, and marks and uh, there's a little bit of uh, flash on some of the chrome pieces. I also discovered I had forgotten to drill the mirror holes from the inside of the cab uh, and uh, I didn't want to take that risk now so um, I either did it that way uh, and, and risked uh, ruining it or left them off. Well, you can see what happened. So the badge in the front uh, gets a light wash with some black panel liner along with the uh, body panels uh, with some acrylic black wash. And then um, there are some decals that are added over some of the uh, emblems and uh, you'll uh, be able to install those. Now the, in the head, in front the headlight um, uh, surrounds were painted black with a felt pen and then the front bumper um, I actually sprayed that with Alclad to make sure it matched the rear bumper. And also that front badge, um, I think it really gets improved with the wash. Now in the rear, you'll notice that those uh, bumper mounts were painted uh, black and the stoplights added. And also notice that the, um, the, the little um, exhaust uh, pipes there make uh, a nice improvement. Uh, you can see they're hollow just like a real one would be. But overall, um, you can see from the underside the details uh, that we were working on earlier um, and uh, they really they really show up nice 
and the engine looks a little bit of crooked along with the drive shaft just a slight difference um, watch that as it dries and uh, and then make sure you uh, nudge those into position to get them correct well there you have it um, the kit does have a few um, uh, omissions and issues just like every kit does uh, but um, if you know what to look for, and now you do, you'll be able to overcome any of those and uh, come out with a superbly looking 66 Ford truck. Uh, it looks great in the two-tone finish, I think, and um, and everything fit together pretty well. Um, you know, the, the uh, engineering there was good. Uh, it's just some of the, um, you know, issues we talked about with some flash, etc., and some of the instruction errors, you know, really uh, could be uh, uh, bothersome. But uh, like I said, those have all been pointed out. So now you'll be able to build a perfect uh, example of this kit. And uh, it'll proudly go onto your shelf. And if I were you, I'd buy one and put one there. We hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. So that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any review. But you can also find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.